David was the youngest. The three eldest followed Saul. But David went back and forth from Saul to feed his father's sheep in, at Bethlehem. For forty days the Philistine came forward and took his stand, morning and evening. And Jesse said to David his son, Take for your brothers an ephah of this parched gain, and these ten loaves, and carry them quickly to the camp to your brothers. Also take these ten cheeses to the commander of their thousand. See if your brothers are well. And bring some token from them. Now Saul and they and all the men of Israel were in the valley of Elah, fighting with the Philistines. And David rose early in the morning and left the sheep with a keeper and took the provisions and went as Jesse had commanded him. And he came to the encampment as the host was going out to the battle line, shouting the war cry. And Israel and the Philistines drew up for battle, army against army. <laughs> ah, I forgot where I am now. We'll be looking at my camcorder just in case if, if it was still recording. Where am I now? Crikey. <sighs> Um, uh, I'm going to read it from the top. And David left the things in charge of the keeper of the baggage and ran to the ranks and went and greeted his brothers. And he talked with them, behold, the champion, the Philistine of Gath. Goliath by name came up out of the ranks and the Philistines and spoke the same words as before. And David heard him. All the men of Israel, when they saw the man, fled from him and were much afraid. And the men of Israel said, Have you seen this man who has come up? I'm repeating this for a reason. Surely he has come up to defy Israel, and the king will enrich the man who kills him with great riches, and will give him his daughter, and make his father's house free in Israel. And David said to the men who stood by him, What shall be done for the man who kills the Philistine, and takes away the reproach from Israel? For who is this? uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God question mark and the people answered him in the same way so shall it be done to the man who kills him now Elab his eldest brother heard when he spoke to the men and Elab's anger was kindled Kindled against David, and he said, Why have you come down? And with whom have you left those few sheep in the wilderness? I know your presumption and the evil of your heart, for you have come down to see the battle. And David said, What have I done now? Was it not but a word? And he turned away from him toward another and spoke in the same way and the people answered him again as before when the words that David spoke were heard they repeated them before Saul and he sent for him and David and Saul let no man's heart fail because of him your servants will go and fight with this Philistine and Saul said to David you are not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him for you are are but a youth, and he has been a man of war from his youth. But David said to Saul, Your servant used to keep sheep for his father. And when there came a lion or a bear and took a lamb from the flock, I went after him and struck him and delivered it out of his mouth. And if he arose against me, I caught him by his beard and struck him and killed him. Your servant has struck down both lions and bears, and this uncircumcised Philistine shall be like 
one of them, for he has defied the armies of the living God. And David said, The Lord who delivered me from the paw of the lion and from the paw of the bear will deliver me from the hand of the Philistine. And Saul said to David, Go, and the Lord be with you. Then Saul clothed David with his armour. He put a helmet of bronze on his head and clothed him with a, clo with a coat of mail. And David strapped his sword over his armour, and he tried in vain to go, for he had not tested them. Then David said to Saul, I cannot go with these, for I have not tested them. So David put them off. Then he took his staff in his hand and chose five smooth stones from the brook and, then, and put them in his shepherd's pouch. His sling was in his hand and he approached the Philistine. And the Philistine moved forward and came near David with his shield bearer in front of him. Uh, it's going to go off in a bit so you'll have to look it up. And when the Philistine looked and saw David, he disdained, disdained him, for he was but a youth, ruddy and handsome in appearance. And the Philistine said to David, And I, a dog, that you come to me with sticks. And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. The Philistine said to David, Come to me, and I will give your flesh to the birds of the air and to the beasts of the field. Then David said to the Philistine, You come to me with a sword and with a spear and with a javelin, but I come to you with but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defined. This day the Lord will deliver you into my hand, and I will strike you down and cut off your head. And I will give the dead bodies of the host of the Philistines this day to the birds of the air and to the wild beasts of the earth. That all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. And that all this assembly may know that the Lord saves not with sword and spear. For the battle is the Lord's and he will give you into our hand and when the philistine arose and came and drew near to meet david david ran quickly toward the battle line to meet the philistine and david put his hand in his bag and took out a stone and slung it and struck the philistine on his forehead the stone sank into his forehead and he fell on his face to the ground so david prevailed over the Philistine with a sling and with a stone and struck the Philistine and killed him. There was no sword in the hand of David. Then David ran and stood over the Philistine and took his sword and drew it out of his she sheath and killed him and cut off his head with it. When the Philistine saw that their champion was dead, Oh, sorry, when the Philistines saw that their champion was dead, they fled. And the men of Israel and Judah rose, with a shout and pursued the Philistines as far as Gath and the gates of Ekron, so that the wounded Philistines fell on the way from Sharam, Sharam, sorry, as far as Gath and Ekron, and the people of Israel came back from chasing the Philistines, and they plundered their camp. And David took the head of the Philistine and brought it to, to Jerusalem, but he put his armour in his tent. As soon as Saul saw David go out against the Philistine, he said to Abner, the commander of the army, Abner, whose son is this youth. And Abner said, As your soul lives, O king, I do not know. And the king said, Inquire whose son the boy is. And as soon as David... Now nah, it's gone off. I nearly read all that anyway. 
It doesn't matter what kind of giants you've got in your path. Understand, it can be anything. It can be, it can be addictions. It can be lust. It can be anything. It can be gambling. It can be swearing all the time, and sometimes we can't help it. Some of us, some Christians, steal, and you know we're not all perfect. It can be anything. This giant that I had a dream about can represent anything in our lives. But as believers in Christ Jesus, we can overcome. We can overcome anything. I pray right now that anybody who is watching and can't seem to um, can't, can't seem to move um, in, in, in your spiritual path, in your spiritual walk with God and you've got something bugging you all the time then I pray right now that God will move this thing out of your life it could be obsession with somebody it could be paranoia it, it could be anything God wants to move the Goliath from your life he wants to set you free he wants to do amazing things he wants us to be champions to be warriors of the gospel he's got a plan for all of us who are we going to follow God of the Bible or Satan it's up to us um I've enjoyed reading that, it's really uplifted me. I was reading from the English Standard Version from BibleGateway.com and you know, I, I know I didn't say every word right the first time and I mean there's one or two f funny names in there as well but when you're reading stuff in the Bible it really uplifts you. And, yeah, basically, it's so true, God's word is so powerful, and I just want to share that with you all. I'm not the Nero, and I will see you again, another time, for more chatting and more gun stuff. So keep informed on Northern Hero 099 and I will be back.